Well, happening this weekend, a Portland nonprofit working to build community through the arts is marking 50 years of music. Yeah, Artichoke Community Music started as a small instrument shop and now is going to be a big part of the city's local music scene. And joining us now on the couch to tell us about their big celebration concert this Sunday is Shelly Garrett, the executive director of Artichoke Community Music. We also have Blaine Heinenen, the drummer from Glitter Fox, one of the band's headlining. That's, uh, first of all, appreciate you coming in. Excited to see your show. Yeah. yeah. Glad you're here. Good morning. We're happy to, to come in. Here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. So, Shelly, dive into Artichoke Community Music. What What is it all about? And then, of course, what is this festival all about? Well, number one, it's about community. Uh, started out, like it said, in, in, as an instrument shop. It was over in Northwest Portland for several years through several owners. Then it moved to Southeast Hawthorne, which is where most people in Portland will remember it from. It went through two different owners there. The last owner um, ended up moving it to a nonprofit. During that time, it also added an, an event venue. There's also classes. So it's one of the few places in town where you can buy an instrument, learn how to play it. You have performance opportunities either with open mics, um, song circles, we have coffee house showcases where people as they move up in their performance, they can do those and then feature shows. That is so cool. Now, Blaine, you have been involved here with Artichoke Community Music long before your, your band was coming into to headline. So tell us a little bit how you first got involved. Uh, well, I even heard about the open mic there. It's pretty notorious. And uh, I, moved, I moved nine years ago. In a good ago. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, moved, I moved out here nine years ago from Maryland, and I knew about the open mic before I got here. Oh, my gosh. And my bandmate at the time, still, still to this day, we're taking a hiatus, but pretty gritty. We went to it, also played some shows on the old location in Hawthorne, and then pandemic happened, full-time musician, things came to a halt. Yeah. I got a job, they offered me a job at Artichoke. I was already volunteering a little bit here and there. Got laid off because of funding and then just kept coming back and I was like, I'll just keep coming back till they hire me back again. <laughs> we'll work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Say, persistence yeah. is key. That's, yeah. a, that's a great way to go I about it. I else to do, so I was like, I'm thinking about succession coming. planning at my age. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's great. I mean, so clearly it is a space where, you know, it's not just come in and perform and, and, and leave. There really is that community, like mm -hmm. Shelly mentioned there. Uh, tell us about your, your performance, Glitter Fox coming in and, and what you hope to get out of this festival. Uh, so Glitter Fox, been together for 10 years. I just joined, uh, coming up on my first year with them. We got asked to headline for the festival. Mm -hmm. uh, love the group. Uh, they're all about, they love Artichoke, and we're all happy to just be a part of the anniversary. And I should mention, all of the artists are performing for free. It's a fundraiser for oh, Artichoke. Wow, that's mm. fantastic. And this week we've had six different fundraisers. Everyone has performed for free. We've had some of the old owners bring in their tribe and perform. We're having a trivia contest Sunday night. Um, tonight we have a sold out show with Kate Power and Steve Einhorn, who owned it for 26 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Monday night we had an open mic with Richard Colombo and brought in a lot of people who had not ever been to the new location. Yeah. It moved there in 2017, so we're rebuilding that tribe. And everyone's telling us it'll take five years after the pandemic to get back to where we were. Yeah. And we are flat out in survival mode right well, now. Well, Shelly, mm. we were talking a little bit here, uh, you know, during the commercial break about just the fact that, you know, we, we're on the other side of this pandemic. A lot of the grant funding and some of the emergency funds that were in place during the pandemic have, have run out. Yeah. But musicians, uh, service industry, a lot of the economy is still struggling yeah. to rebound. So this is a really critical time for you guys. It is. I mean, right now we can make it through June. If we have successful events this week, we'll make it through July. Wow. Otherwise, it's hand to mouth. And the community has, the Artichoke community is such a family. They have just stepped up. People have been giving us donations. We have a Patreon membership started that's three times more than it's ever been. Mm. It's not enough yet. We're still working on that. But I've only been there for just basically two months. In that time, we've had a three-day sale. We've had an eight-hour telethon and now all these events. So we're hoping the community remembers where we are. Mm -hmm. um, I'm being really honest with them about the fact that we're on the ropes. And so I think they're gonna tell us whether or not they think we're still viable. Wow. And being viable to me is, it's always been a place where folk music has been celebrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've really, and before me, started expanding genres. We have Irish music, we support a Celtic nonprofit with a monthly show. We have bluegrass jams where, you know, maybe the average age is older than me even, but we have young people come in. We had two brothers, eight and 10 years old, that came in with their fiddles a few months ago. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. They wrote the most amazing Yelp review about how welcoming it was, how great it was to bring their fiddles oh, in cool. and play with everybody. 
Um, I've got a lot of history. You were talking about the blues. Um, yeah. I was on the board of the Blues Association in the 90s and most recently the last three years up until 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to bring a lot of the acoustic blues to artichoke. Yeah, that's really you know, neat. It's like Curtis Elgato. Everybody He's probably amazing. knows yeah. Yeah. Curtis Elgato. I've seen him Elgato. at the Blues Festival yeah. many times. Headlining with a band, headlining mm -hmm. at a big club. Mm -hmm. well, when he comes to artichoke, it's himself and his amazing guitar player, Alan Hager. That's really it cool. is intimate. You can talk, they mm -hmm. tell stories. It, there just isn't another place where they can do that. And right. Curtis loves it. Right. We are running out of time, but I do want to make sure that people also know about the silent auction that you have yes. real quick. So mm -hmm. we only have a few seconds, but if you don't mind talking okay. about that really quickly. If you remember Quarter Flash, <laughs> <laughs> if you remember Quarter Flash, Marv Ross has a D18 Martin guitar. Mm. He wrote all of his hits on. That is our signature item. That is really cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. for him Stop. to do that, I'm like, you're going to what? He goes, no, I want to give it to Artichoke. Oh, my wow. gosh. Yeah. Well, it's a great way to help out there. Uh, wow. Shelly and Blaine, wish we had more time. Really appreciate you coming okay. in to talk about That's the right. festival. Thank it's going to be great. It will. Uh, yeah. Thanks and for having us. I mean, this is hit. the kind of stuff people talk about Portland having such a vibrant music scene. It's because of community spots like this. Yep. We, we got to support them and, and keep that music alive. So thank you, guys. Good luck. I hope the festival is a smashing success. The celebration concert happening this Sunday, June 11th from 5 to 10 p.m at the Alberta Rose Theatre. For tickets and info and more ways to support, check out albertarosetheater.com and also check out Artichoke Music. Such a cool space. Absolutely.